Hey super scientists, we're on page five in your molecular biology lab notebook. We're starting off this new unit. This note section is MB1 and reviewing chemical compounds in cells. We're going to write down this definition for the term macromolecules on the top of page five. So if you'll pause the video please and go ahead and write that down. One thing that you'll notice about the word macromolecules, it has a stem in it. This, the term macro here. So micro, M-I-C-R-O, refers to small. So what do you think macro might be? Macro is going to refer to large. So macro molecules are large molecules. They're the large biological molecules that are needed for life. All living organisms are going to need them. And that's going to include substances such as carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. So those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about as we look at chemical compounds in the cells. So there are two different terms that we need to look at in terms of macromolecules or not being a macromolecule. Organic compounds and inorganic compounds. So an inorganic compound is not going to contain the element carbon. So think about your periodic table and the substance carbon. So inorganic is not going to have carbon in it. So if you know the chemical formula for the substance, such as sodium chloride here, salt, NaCl. We have sodium, we have chlorine, we don't see the element carbon in that chemical formula. Also water, H2O, again does not have capital C, does not have carbon in that chemical formula. So those two are easy examples to identify whether it is inorganic or not. Some organic compounds. Organic compounds are going to contain carbon. So if you were to look at the chemical formula for these substances, then you would see capital C. You would see carbon as one of the elements. Nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA, ribonucleic acid. So those two things are going to contain carbon. Carbohydrates. You may have talked about carbohydrates in health class, carbohydrates like pasta and bread, things like that. It actually has part of the word carbon in here, carbo. So that carbo is referring to carbon. And then the hydrate part of it, hydrate is referring to water. So not only does it have carbon, but it also has water, it has hydrogen oxygen in it. Lipids are gonna be um, fatty substances. Uh, for example, this picture is referring to the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer. Your stem bi means two, so you have two of these layers kind of back to back, and it's showing the hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends of the phospholipid bilayer. So that structure in cell membrane contains lipids. It contains the element carbon. And then proteins like meat eggs, things like that, are going to also contain carbon as well, so they're organic. Water. So water is something that's really important. You should be drinking a lot of water. Water makes up about two-thirds of the human body. No, there's not a fish floating around in your body. Just thought this was a funny picture. So you have a lot of water in your body, and that's because water is important. Water is needed. So water is going to be required for a lot of chemical reactions that take place in your body. It helps to regulate body temperature. It also helps to take substances from outside of the cell into the cell. So it helps with a couple of the processes we're getting ready to talk about. So it helps a lot of different things to actually take place. Stuff couldn't happen in your body without water. You've got water as a component in your blood to help that fluid to move substances and nutrients throughout your body. Diffusion is one type of um, moving cell materials around. It's one type of transport that's going to be taking molecules from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So that means you're taking substances like oxygen, for example, from an area where there's a whole bunch of them to an area where there's not a whole lot. And the reason why that occurs is it's try the cell is trying to balance things out. It's trying to make sure you have the right amount of stuff outside the cell as you do inside. And that will help with maintaining that internal balance that we're gonna be talking about. So in this example, you have a whole bunch of oxygen molecules on the outside, and in this example, after diffusion has occurred, you have about the equal amount inside and outside of the cell in terms of looking at those oxygen molecules. 
Osmosis is also a type of diffusion, but it's specifically referring to water. So water is so important to your body and so important to chemical processes that take place that it gets its own special little name. So osmosis is just diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane. We're going to come back to that term in just a minute. But basically when you see selectively permeable, Membrane is going to be referring to the cell membrane. So you have an example of a normal red blood cell. So you see these blue little water molecules that looks about equally distributed outside of the cell and inside of the cell. And in this example, the cell is kind of misshaped. You've got too many water molecules in it. And if the blood cell gets too much water in it, lysis occurs. It explodes. So in that case, you got to have some of those water molecules moving out. And on the flip side of that, if you've got too many outside of the cell, the cell is not going to be hydrated enough. So it's going to have to take some of these water molecules into the cell. So we have that happening, that movement of osmosis, that water molecule um, will be moving into the internal environment of the blood cell. Next, we have selective permeability. So we were just talking about this a few moments ago. So when you hear the term selective permeability or selectively permeable, it is referring to the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is the layer that surrounds animal and plant cells. And the cell membrane is going to select what comes into and what exits the cell. The term selective refers to choosing, and permea refers to pass or go through. So literally, the cell membrane is going to be monitoring what's going in and out of the cell. Little Lord of the Rings reference here, you shall not pass. So basically, that's what the cell membrane does. It protects what's in the cell, protects the contents of the cell, which you think about, it's got your nucleus, it's got your DNA in it. So it allow things in that it needs, like water, and then waste is going to push out of the cell. It's going to allow to exit. So have you ever wondered why you shiver or why you sweat or pee or poop or why you breathe out carbon dioxide? Well, the answer to that is homeostasis. It is your body's way of keeping things balanced. So homeostasis is the body's ability, the body's um, effort to maintain a stable internal environment. So if you're really cold, you're going to be shivering, and that's because your body is trying to trap heat right up against your little arm hairs, and that will um, allow for that uh, warmth to be generated. So it's basically trapping a little bit of warm air around those goosebumps that you get, and that will help to increase your body's temperature, help you to warm up. Same thing with if you're too hot, then what do you do? start sweating. So that's your body's way of cooling off. So as you sweat, you're releasing those water droplets. And then as those water droplets evaporate, that's going to help you to cool off. So here's a couple other ways that your body maintains homeostasis. And that would be through balancing acidity, like in your stomach, you have basically um, like hydrochloric acid kind of pH in your stomach, maintaining temperature, sweating, shivering, glucose in the bloodstream. So that's referring to regulation of uh, that sugar level through use of insulin, maintaining calcium. So we know that you need calcium in your body. Um, milk does body good, so you need calcium in order to make your bones and teeth strong. And balancing fluids, so you pee, you go to the bathroom, and that helps to balance out the amount of fluid that you have in your body, helps to release those substances that you don't need. And also, same thing for why you poop. You've got all that food that you're taking in, your body processes it, takes in the nutrients that you need, sends it to the cells for those nutrients to be utilized, and then that stuff's got to go somewhere, so it's excreted from the body. So on page five, you had this nice little chart about organic compounds. So we're going to just quickly review through the substances. Carbohydrates, we've already talked a little bit about. So we know that carbohydrates, um, as well as the other substances we're looking at, are organic, so they're going to contain carbon. Lipids do as well. Proteins and nucleic acids, those are the four examples that we were looking at. An example of carbohydrates would be sugars and starches. And those sugars and starches help to form the cell wall in plants and also the cell membrane in plants and animals, and they provide you with energy. Lipids are, can be like sort of a, um, a fatty or waxy, oily substance. So fats is an example, and they help to form cell membranes. It's why a lot of um, vegetables and fruits that you might eat have sort of a waxy layer on the outside of it, and they provide you with energy as well. Proteins 
can um, contain enzymes which help to speed up chemical reactions. Um, also, a substance that helps with forming cell membranes and in the organelles. And nucleic acids, DNA, RNA are two examples. And they help produce proteins and provide your genetic information. Your genetic information is DNA. On page 12, you have this beautiful little concept map, and this is reviewing organic compounds. So organic compounds we know are also called macromolecules. That's what we looked at a few minutes ago. And organic compounds are going to contain the element carbon. So there's different types of organic compounds, which we just reviewed. Carbohydrates, lipids, uh, proteins, and nucleic acids. So those are your four organic compounds. Our carbohydrate examples are sugar and starches. Lipids include fats, oils, and waxes, like the waxy coating on the outside of an apple. Proteins are made of amino acids. And nucleic acids, your two examples of nucleic acids are DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, ribonucleic acid. So both of those are going to be related to your genetic information in your nucleus.